Hey, it's Meg with Seed to Fork. It is middle of July and it's time. I have not done a garden tour in a couple of months. Life's been just crazy, but I am going to try to get through as much of the garden as I, as I can here in as short of an amount of time. There's so much to cover, so I'll just dig right in. I'm just gonna give you guys a quick spin through the garden, through what, what we've got growing. Um, I'm gonna focus a little bit on what I'm replacing or what has cropped and what I am um, thinking about for fall. I'll also show you my, my fall starts. So this was the earliest bed I planted. I planted it with peas. I planted it with um, cabbages. I planted it with, um, what else is in here? Kohlrabi and all that's out. I've got two stragglers there. I've got a Savoy cabbage and a Violetta that are still here. And I also did some multi-sown onions here and they're still in the ground. I just like, look at that. I'm a little emotionally attached to that, even though I think they're ready to be harvested. I just haven't, <laughs> haven't gotten there yet. Um, I've reset this with soybeans. I've been growing soybeans on the later side. Um, the Japanese beetles love them. And I sort of like have found that they're not going to come into full production until August. And the Japanese beetles are slowing down by then. I've replanted this whole area wherever there was, I pulled food out with fall carrots for our winter winter garden. Um, these are some saved beans that were really unique that I'm trying to see if I can replicate. They were like a purple borlotti. This is my second succession. I've got three successions of bush beans. We've got some um, corn here, as well as some cucumbers and volunteers. We've got a massive problem with Canada thistle. Uh, that we are just gonna, it's gonna be years, years, years long. It made its way into the garden. That just kinda is what it is. More corn, this is cornmeal corn, kabocha squash, zinnia, um, another early bed. These are carrots. These carrots, some of these carrots are just about ready to eat. We've got shallots here. These are my earliest carrots and we are eating these as you can see. I'm, I'm gonna be probably pulling the rest of these and using this as another place for fall brassicas really soon. This was brassicas in the spring, and I'm thinking I'm gonna try and do fall peas. I say I don't do fall peas, and so because we have more space, I, um, I have more space to play with. And so I'm really, uh, I'm feeling very much like a, a beginner gardener this year, gardening at this scale. It's, it's a little overwhelming, I'm not gonna lie. So trying to keep up with videos and my blog and actually gardening. Um, and I have a book that's coming out next year. And that's kind of my focus is my garden and my book. That's about as much as I can do. Um, and I'm happy to share what I can, but that's about, I'm at capacity there. That's my earliest succession of beans. They are cropping right now. Here's succession number three. This'll be September beans. Those beans will come out. Um, sorry, those beans will come out sometime, probably by August, they'll get replaced. I'm guessing by some direct seeded crops is my guess. Those are dry beans, dapple gray. I love those. They're absolutely delicious. Got some really pretty broccoli in there. I've already harvested one of them this week that we enjoyed. That's our earliest succession of sweet corn. We've got melons here. These are definitely looking better than last year. I'm seeing cucumber beetles a lot and I get them whenever I can, but um, we've got a couple different kinds of melons there. This is kind of my Southern Alley. Don't mind the wren. She's living in our bluebird house. Peanuts. Okra. I'm growing okra for the first time. We have not cooked with it. I'm not a big fan of like fried food, so I need to figure out what I'm going to do with it. Japanese beetles always gravitate to pole beans. They did not used to gravitate to like dry beans, but this is a Fort Portal Jade and they are really liking it. Um, what I've been trying to do every couple days is, this would be a great time to do it, but I'm trying to get this video done before the rain comes, is pull as many of the beetles off as I can. And then I even come through and I pick the foliage off and I throw that away because this foliage ends up having like pheromones on it and it attracts more beetles. We're growing sweet potatoes. We have not grown them since 2017. Again, space, we've got space. We've got about four different potatoes we're growing. Super excited for that too. My kids could eat potatoes almost every day. I bet they'd get sick of them. 
Um, so the rest of what's down here is I've got some summer squash, I've got more cucumbers, more onions, more potatoes, and then flowers. This patio is still being worked. I'll sneak peek. We've got some footings that are going in. We're adding a pergola. It's gonna be pretty crazy. I'm super excited about it. I'll show you that next month. The other thing that's happening is we are getting these beds rebuilt, the triangle beds. We've waited, we're doing something slightly different with those. Um, okay, this is the west side of the garden. Not super happy with how my peppers are doing this year. Some of them are doing better than others, but we had like an early flush of fruit and now we've had almost nothing. So not having a great pepper year. You know, we are watering our garden um, the same across the whole garden space. Um, we have it in, we have the garden, the drip irrigation is in zones. So if I turned this bed off, I could turn this bed off. It would also not water the rest of this bed here, um, which I guess right now is fine. But my point is, is I think maybe watering's an issue. Maybe it's the soil. Um, I mean, they're alive, but they definitely don't look like a normal, like look at how sad that one looks. Anyway, can't have it all, you guys. You just can't have it all. Onions, we're definitely winning on the onion front this year. We have tons of tomatoes. They are, let's see if I can zoom in here. They are not necessarily ripe yet, but um lots and lots and lots of fruit set so that's exciting really exciting this was a buckwheat cover crop and now it's going to be one of the many places where i put my fall cabbages continuing with the southern crop theme i'm growing collards for the first time and i can't wait to cook with them i've eaten them a few times so trying to expand our culinary and cultural experiences this year. Our cucumbers, there's probably cucumbers in there for us to harvest. These are Cape gooseberries. I love these, love, love, love them. And um, I do not love the three-lined potato beetle, um, but I actually think the wren has been coming in and snacking on the larva, because it looks like they're starting to get under control. I fight with the three-lined potato beetles for the first six weeks of the growing season. It's kind of miserable. Uh, we've got butternut squash here. I've got more sweet corn, a second succession of sweet corn here called honey badger, which is something new to us. And I've got some dry beans in there. So now we're entering into, this is the garden addition now. These next three beds are what we formally added. In addition to adding that first bed I showed you where I was resetting things with soybeans. That used to be raspberries. We actually took our raspberries out this year. Kind of savage, but it happens. So I've got another type of beet corn. This is dry corn. This is a Hopi turquoise. And I've got some um, giant beans in here that I was gifted. And I've got some borlotti, the beautiful pink pods, mottled pink pods. And I've got some cucamelons in here. Um, and I've got another round of cabbages because we have more space. I've been sowing cabbages about once a month and tucking them in and around. Um, we never, red cabbage we could eat all the time. So um, a lot of it's red cabbage and savoy. Those are kind of our two favorites. I did just make nine pounds of sauerkraut yesterday. So starting to put some food up little by little. This is like my favorite little spot in the garden this year. This is Sweet Alyssum, Rosie O'Day. It's Thai basil, and then it's my black and tan sesame. And they're all pink and quite, quite beautiful. It really, really makes me very happy. And then down at the bottom, this was kind of my temporary herb bed because our herb bed was not quite ready. Um, I'm growing lemongrass this year, which was really fun. A friend of mine, local friend of mine, gave me the seeds last year. Um, cilantro I missed the boat already which is kind of how I roll I've just recently harvested some cabbages in here dill's going to seed and we're not quite ready for our <laughs> pickles more herbs we've got basil and parsley here I've got some sage and some thyme and lots of flowers and um so that's kind of that was my very very quick tour but really one of my favorite views is this view. Um, so we added three tunnels. I think maybe I haven't shown you this, 
So we added three tunnels instead of just one. We took out the main tunnel up on the main pathway and just in favor of just this one. So, um, and with a new pergola there, this is really gonna be an absolutely stunning garden view. Super excited to show you as it changes. All right, so as promised, fall starts. These are several successions. This is the most recent one I did um, end of June. That one back there is late June, June 22nd or so, June 26th. This one was about June 10th. Um, and these are some more from like the June 10th time frame. These ones are going to be going in the ground really soon. Those are also quite overdue. I mean, look at how big some of those lettuce are and the kale. So I'm really excited to get some of those in the ground for kind of a late August, early September harvest. A lot of these are also going to be uh, for the root cellar. So making plans. I am so close to being done with indoor sowing and then I can just focus on sowing fall radishes and turnips and, and more carrots and things like that. So I'm looking forward to a little break from seed starting very, very, very soon. So I am hoping to be able to give you more updates next month as well. A lot's going to change in the next three or four weeks. So I look forward to sharing with you kind of some of the finishing touches that we're planning for this garden remodel that we took on this spring. So stay tuned. And as always, thanks so much for watching.